So the top headline today from the Associated Press, Trump declares U.S. leaving horrible Iran nuclear accord. President Donald Trump withdrew the U.S. from the landmark nuclear accord with Iran on Tuesday, abruptly restoring harsh sanctions in the most consequential foreign policy action of his presidency. He declared he was making the world safer, but he also deepened his isolation on the world stage and revived doubts about American credibility. <sighs> so this kind of goes to the presentation from uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, Bibi uh, of Israel, revealing the, the leaked documents from Iran's nuclear program. And I, I've heard in some of the coverage that his, uh, his, his audience was Donald Trump and giving him, obviously, the, the global credibility to do something that he had wanted to do anyway, saying that the Iran deal was a bad deal. Although I had thought before that was mostly political posture in one of his positions that he could walk away from. Now, just for the background, the 2015 agreement, which was negotiated by the Obama administration and included Germany, France, and Britain, had lifted most U.S. and international economic sanctions against Iran. In exchange, Iran agreed to restrictions on its nuclear program, making it impossible to produce a bomb and establishing rigorous inspections. So, as Trump has said, it is defective at its core. Now, th this is an interesting where you go, what, what is the libertarian position looking at this? And it, it's sort of like, you know, looking at two bad actors fighting or, or duking it out, whatever, like, do you care who comes out on top? No, you just hurt, you just care that there, there is nobody hurt on the sidelines, that there's no collateral damage for, from this. And so when I look at a story like this, you know, I, I, I honestly, I, I really don't care to do the research. I really don't care uh, to see how bad Netanyahu is lying. He has such a record of lies and deceit as the government has such a consistent record of lies and deceit. The, the two governments have a deal between themselves like this. You're, you're really like going to think that neither one of them was lying at some point in that, that there wasn't some deceit. Like, I mean, come on. And, and the irony of this, the way that it's being presented, the framing that has been accepted by the mainstream media on the story is such that the United States government is seen as the good guy, uh, the, 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 the sort of a, a good guy, bad guy, you know, partners in making the world a better place, the big, stronger government comes in and helps the little one behave better, right? I mean, it's you, you sort of tease out, deconstruct all of these stories, the narratives underneath uh, are, are like revealed to be very, you know, petty and childish and, and quite silly. But especially when you recall that the United States has the biggest nuclear arsenal in the world right now and is the only government that has actually dropped nuclear weapons on people in a way that was totally tactically unnecessary at the time. And that's just not some conspiracy theory about World War II and the, the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. That's just looking at the quotes of all the generals and admirals who are around at that time saying, you know, we don't need to do this. We shouldn't have to do this. So the sanctions are primarily focused on limiting Iran's ability to sell oil and do business overseas. So this is going to have wide ranging impact. So I look at this and I go, well, that, this is the, the important part. I, it's not so much the nuclear weapon thing. Although you would think, you know, come on, Adam, you care about saving people's lives. Of course, don't you want? No, yes. I don't think it, it's realistic that any government today is going to be able to, in the age of the internet, come up with an excuse to drop a nuclear weapon on people. I just, I, I don't see that as a realistic threat. What is the realistic threat? What is the current source of pain is the sanctions. And right now in Iran, you know, Iran is, they're going to be fine. It, it's not like a third world country that's dependent on oil revenue. It wouldn't be like doing this to Venezuela. But with Iran facing these, these sanctions, the, the people who suffer most are going to be the people of Iran who are then economically isolated in, in those whatever limited ways. But the world suffers from not having a more free trade-based economy. Major companies in the U.S. and Europe could be hurt too. 
Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin said that license is held by Boeing and its European competitor Airbus to sell billions of dollars in commercial jetliners to Iran will be revoked. Certain exemptions are to be negotiated, but Mnuchin refused to discuss what products might qualify. Iran's government must now decide whether to follow the U.S. and withdraw or try to salvage what's left with the Europeans. Iranian President Hassan Rouhani said he was sending his foreign minister to the remaining countries, but warned that there was a short time to negotiate with them. Laying out his case, Trump contended, if we do nothing, we know exactly what will happen. In just a short period of time, the world's leading state sponsor of terror will be on the cusp of acquiring the world's most dangerous weapons. <laughs> I, I kind of hate to laugh at a serious subject about this, but the world's leading state sponsor of terror is not the government of Iran. It is the government of the United States. Yeah. The world's most dangerous weapons are already owned by the government of the United States. I, I don't know. Like, I, I guess this is really at getting at attacking the fundamental psychological Stockholm syndrome kind of underpinning of statism that if, if it was an individual doing this, if you reduce these, these players, these, these international, these national governments, like to individual people, and you saw what they were doing and you put it into like, I don't know, I, I kind of fantasize that there'd be someone putting it into like a, you know, some kind of sitcom format and there are different parodies that kind of get at this in, in different ways. But you just you you look at the everything that the United States federal government does and go, holy crap! You're the you're the biggest asshole on the planet. You're a bully. What the hell? What the heck is this? It's insane. So, I mean, just skipping ahead. Just uh, although the U.S. and Europeans made progress on ballistic missiles and inspections, there were disagreements over extending the life of the deal and how to trigger additional penalties if Iran were found in violation. U.S. officials and European diplomats have said. And remember, this is Iran, whose government is largely in place due to American meddling in that country, especially the CIA. So, it's it's that these the, the modern empire, and you look at it as the U.S. dollar empire. But it's interesting that in this case, uh, you, know, you know, they included um, what were the companies countries? Uh, Ger yeah, it's a good Freudian slip there. Uh, Germany. France and Britain, it's, it's not so much the dollar empire, but the, the empire of the, the global financier, financiers, the ones who, who really pull the strings and those who fund both sides of every war so that poor men die for the benefit of rich men. In this case, Iran is just well too developed a country to really fall victim to, to this. But this is the kind of, of modern imperial bullying that is uh, the world's finest. Now, following up to that story from McClatchyDC.com, Trump's withdrawal from Iran deal sets up best relations with Israel in a decade. When Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu released what he said was new information about Iran's nuclear weapons development, his dramatic unveiling was beamed across the globe. But it was really designed for an audience of one. President Trump. So this story goes on to talk about the past friendship of Trump and Netanyahu and the relations between the two. And what's really sad about this is that they're, they're putting this in terms where you forget that Israel has a just an, an unprecedented, historically unique relationship with the United States government, where it, you almost want to say like Israel is this special 51st state, right? We've heard that analogy before. But it's almost like it's the state that's in charge of the United States, that Israel pulls the strings in America's government, in American government's foreign policy, that it is also per capita a greater beneficiary of the taxes paid to the United States government in terms of the foreign aid that goes to Israel, tens of billions of dollars every single year. And so to say that, you know, they're having a, a better relationship is just, it, it is so sick. 
It is sad, and and I just you know what I don't even want to get into this. I'm 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 bored with this story. I I really am because it's all part of the show. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube, and you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at and we'll share it on my feed.